Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to discuss the potential of metagenomic next generation sequencing in routine diagnostic microbiology. Um, so the identification of causative pathogens and in infectious diseases is a critical component of healthcare. And diagnostic microbiology involves itself in the isolation and the identification of pathogens in clinical specimens for antimicrobial susceptibility testing. And public health involves itself in the surveillance of AMR um, and monitoring of outbreaks. Um, so there has been an evolution of technology from basic culture and microscopy, so on this side, through advanced culture, molecular detection, and um, um, molecular detection and uh, DNA-based detection through PCR. So we have examples of culture, uh, microscopy here, uh, matrix-assisted laser desorption ionization time of flight mass spectrometry, uh, uh, fluorescent label carbon decreases in our blood culture monitoring and our nested multiplex PCRs come in a cartridge. So the evolution of DNA-based technology began in 1985 by Carrie Mullis's discovery of PCR through to qPCR and now digital PCR. Um, PCR enables highly sensitive and rapid individual and batch sample testing and is invaluable to microbiology labs. So just briefly an overview of the principles of PCR. A sample is collected. Um, a the uh, patient, there's pathogen inactivation by detergents or chaotropic reagents um, or heating. The DNA is extracted and added to a PCR plate with TAC polymerase primers and free DNTPs in excess buffer solution. This plate is put on a temperature cycling instrument where cyclic temperatures allow elongation, hybridization, primary annealing, and denaturation. PCR products are analyzed by agarose gel electrophoresis and fluorocomb labeled primers uh, such as FAM allow the detection and quantitative quantitation of PCR products through the use of a fragment analyzer. Um, digital PCR is slightly different uh, in that the specimen is combined with PCR reagents and then it's subdivided into individual partitions such that an average each contains fewer than a single copy of the template molecule of interest. The array or, of partitions is subjected to thermocycling until an endpoint is reached after which partitions are ascertained for a fluorescent reporter that indicates the successful application of the specified target. Quantification of the partitions that are positive versus negative for application allows the absolute concentration of original target molecules to be inferred using Poisson statistics. So that is emerging as a uh, technology in itself. Um, but I'm interested today in whole genome sequencing through uh, NGS to MNGS. So as you can see, there has been a technological development in sequencing, uh, sequence-based typing in itself. And at the moment, we are in the next generation sequencing phase, the different types of LNST and metagenomics is uh, just a little bit down the road from that. So whole genome sequencing, uh, so it starts with Sanger sequencing in the 1970s. This involved DNA replication of a single sound template with the use of a primer and a DNTP. The primer and DNTP are mixed with fluorescently labeled didoxynucleotides, DDNTPs, and these are missing a hydroxy group at the site at which another uh, nucleotide usually attaches to form a chain. So each DDNTP is labeled with different fluorophore, and every time a DDNTP is incorporated in the growing complementary strand, it terminates replication, resulting in multiple short strands of replicated DNA. So gel electrophoresis reveals fluorescent banding in a gel uh, correlating to the sequence of the template strand. Um, we also have shotgun sequencing and pairwise end sequencing. So copies of a DNA fragment are cut randomly into smaller pieces, and these segments are sequenced using the chain sequencing method. Fragments are analyzed using the computer to see where sequences overlap, and this matches overlapping sequences at the end of each fragment, enabling sequencing of the DNA. Large sequences assembled by overlapping sequences is called a comtic. So whole genome sequencing is not in routine use in microbiology labs in Ireland. A survey in 2017 found by mid-2016, half of the EU countries were using WGS analysis either as first or second line typing for surveillance of pathogens and antibiotic resistance issues identified as EU priorities, such as uh, carbapenemase producing antibacteriaceae. But why is it not available in our friendly neighborhood laboratories? Um, that should be here. Um, so further development is required to improve the workflow of whole genome sequencing, in particular to shorten turnaround times, reduce costs, and streamline downstream data analysis training needs. And this is an issue through the next generation methods as well. So since 2005, the automated high throughput and rapid DNA sequencing techniques used by labs are under the umbrella term of next generation sequencing. So they, there are automated and low cost sequencers that can generate millions of short fragments in 24 hours, but software and bioinformatics are used to interpret this data. So it has potential to dramatically revolutionize microbiology, especially for uh, time consuming labor intensive techniques. Um, 
So, and create an all in one diagnostic test, which is really important for our slow growers, like such as TV, which can take 56 days to grow in conventional culture. Um, at the present time, NGS is being applied to precision medicine to help diagnose human genetic disorders, prenatal disorders and cancers, but why is it not being used in micro? So the ultimate goal is to place a direct clinical specimen onto the NGS workflow and generate an actionable result in a reasonable time frame. So it offers fantastic opportunities for advancing precision medicine in the clinical micro lab and patient care could be dramatically impacted. However, implementing NGS as a routine test faces significant infrastructure and bioinformatics challenges, and there are little bioinformatics programs available to refine sequencing data to guide clinical decision making. But coming on to MNGS, so metagenomic NGS involves running all nucleic acids in a sample, which may contain a mixed population um, of more microorganisms and assigning these to their reference genomes to understand which microbes are present and in what proportions. So clinical applications, including diagnosis of infectious disease, outbreak tracking, infection control, surveillance, and pathogen mutation discovery and microbiome analysis. So MNGS of clinical sa samples uses shotgun sequencing. Um, Targeted MNGS analysis and microbiology. So targeted approaches increase the number of proportion um, of pathogen reads in the sequence data. And this can increase the detection or sensitivity for microorganisms being um, detected, targeted. So here you can see the 16 or ATS uh, PCR amplification of DNA using highly conserved primers followed by next generation sequencing increases the sensitivity of testing. And primers have been designed to tile across the genome to facilitate PCR amplification and Amplicon NGS for recovery of viral genomes directly in clinical samples. And this was used to track the evolution and spread of Zika in the Americas and, Bola in West, and Ebola in West Africa. So all that's just written there. So in targeted MNGS, uh, Untargeted shotgun MNGS does, does not utilize specific primers or probes, and the entirety of the DNA RNA in the sample is sequenced. So pure cultures of bacteria fungi lead to MNGS reads, which can be assembled into partial or complete genomes, which are then used for subtyping and monitoring hospital outbreaks and surveillance. Untargeted MNGS of clinical samples is the most promising approach for comprehensive diagnosis of infections, as in theory, all bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites can be identified in one assay from one sample. Um, advantages of MNGS uh, are few, <laughs> but hopeful. So MNGS is an unbiased and hypothesis-free diagnostic method. It's free of subjectivity of interpretation from uh, human uh, analyzers. This is in contrast to primers that rely on, on primers for identity. Sorry, contrast to methods that rely on primers for identification of specific targets to be amplified and targeted. So even 16S, 18S ribosomal PCR is not sufficiently broad to con be considered metagenomic. These methods use specific primers of conserved 16S, 18S, or RNA genes and internal transcribed spacer sequences to amplify distinctive nucleic acid sequences that could be bioinformatically classified into bacteria or fungi. So the limitations of MNGS, there are many. Um, incorporation of MNGS into clinical micro labs has been slow. Um, it is in use mostly in public health reference labs where it's used for strain typing, genomic tree mapping and investigation of targeted and possible antimicrobial resistance genes. So I like to feel like whatever starts in a reference lab will slowly trickle down to your routine micro lab. MNGS in current use cannot compare with conventional culture in respect to speed. Uh, for example, sequencing will run on the Illumina the instrument take greater than 18 hours. Um, MNGS is not cost competitive with multiplex assays, not at the moment, but with development and streamlining, it may have more of a co clinical cost benefit eventually. Um, the sensitivity can be affected by the level of background noise. So tissues have higher human DNA background, which all has to be removed before a bioinformatics. Uh, stools and sputum are on sterile secretions that will contain high levels of colonizing DNA. And defining specific microbial profiles that are diagnostic or predictive of disease can be very difficult at the moment, um, as it's very little literature to go off. It is emerging technology. So as it is an emerging technology, there's a large proportion of medical scientists without the necessary education to feel comfortable to interpret these findings and select valid and val um, select databases for validation and also prediction of antimicrobial susceptibilities from results. Um, polymicrobial populations can uh, pose a problem in 16 s sequencing by producing a mixed nucleotide chromatogram that cannot be interpreted, uh, but MNGS can overcome this. 
the necessary removal of human nucleic acid during sequencing, such as from tissue samples with a high level of DNA background. Um, so uh, the removal of this during sequencing preparation and post-analytic process can decrease the sensitivity in comparison to targeted PCR approaches of detection for pathogens. And there are questions surrounding the clinical specificity of MNGS, as is the presence of an organism, in, organism indicate infection or colonization. Now, this is a problem that a uh, microbiologist comes across day to day on a regular plate anyway. Um, so it, it's um, a very similar day to day issue. And uh, some aspects of this can be overcome with stringent controls through uh, through our specimen collection, which is something that's done now, uh, aseptic technique, uh, sequencing library preparation, assay run, and then bioinformatic classification. So once we streamline those bio bioinformatic softwares that come with these, we should be able to have a relatively easy go-to system. And there are a number of benchtop uh, little sequencers ready to go, uh, particularly from Illumina. Uh, we have the iSeq up to the next generation 1,000, 2,000 um, machines, and they are available for small whole genome sequencing for microbes and viruses, um, and could be very, very, very valuable um, to a laboratory. We'd also be able to remove some of the molecular suite necess necessities from three or four rooms to half of a bench with one of these beautiful pieces of technology. There's also the Oxford Nano poor technologies, which are even smaller than the MySeq um, and are even probably easier to use. And also the Ion Gene Studio S5 system by Thermo Fisher. Um, it even comes with a little, close your, put your sample in, close your cap, throw it on the system, put it through the software and you have your answer. It can't get easier than that. So then in conclusion, um, metagenomic next generation sequencing has the potential to completely revolutionize routine clinical micro. Although not currently cost effective at all uh, in comparison to conventional testing, it will, it is becoming exponentially cheaper to sequence and it will eventually start creeping into the laboratory and become competitive. Um, the one big issue is education and training in methods and interpretation of metagenomic next generation sequencing data from patient samples are required before labs can adopt them into use. Um, and that is all for me today. Here are my references. And thank you for listening to my rant on metagenomic next generation sequencing.